Okay, here we are. That took longer than I wanted because I got an app to control my cameras and I was trying to color balance them. Looking at it, I see I have failed. <laughs> but it's closer than it was, maybe? Um, but as you can see, the focus is no longer autofocus. It's just set to right here, where I hold things when I sculpt them. I may have to get clay on my mouse to adjust the position of the focus later, but, um, but I decided that watching back old videos, so much of what I work on is held here under the camera. I'm still adjusting my positioning here. It's just held at like this level. And it's never in focus because the camera keeps trying to like adjust for the motion. So I've just, I'm gonna keep nudging things. Um, I, I've just set the focus to be right here. So that when I work, everything's in focus. And if I need to show you a whole big thing and it's slightly out of focus down here, I'll adjust as I go. But, uh, but I felt that the detail focus was more important. So, here we are with an empty desk and a new camera set up and a vague plan. And the vague plan is to make this goose, this, this goose here. I've got a bunch of reference sketches that I've done in the past of geese around it. Um, the plan is to make a sizable sculpture of a, a sitting goose. And to do so, we're gonna go back to, I'm gonna move some sponges out of the way here. Uh, we're gonna go back to the red, the red clay because the red clay is my favorite sculpture clay currently. Now, the thing that I was talking about on Twitter, where I was debating with myself whether I was gonna do this on, uh, on the stream or not, is that to make, I'll just put you there in vague focus, to make this goose um, bigger than, you know, like this, we're gonna, gonna kinda go for like a, a, you know, a good sized, maybe two thirds life size, a third life size, big, bigger than usual. Um, we need some kind of internal structure to support it because it's gonna have to be hollow. Any structure that's thicker than an inch, an inch and a half needs to be hollow or it will definitely shatter in the kiln. It just, it, it's not possible for it to dry all the way to the center because of the, the sort of thickness of the walls. And when moisture is trapped in the very center of a very large sculpture, that moisture will escape rapidly when it heats up and it will crack and explode. So this goose has to be hollow. And to do that, we're gonna use party time balloons, paper, and packing tape. And I was gonna set all of this up before. I thought, I should do this the day before and have this set up because then I'll just be sculpting. And then I had a very serious debate with myself about which was more interesting, just sculpting like I always do or building an interior with party balloons. And I decided that we would stick to, uh, we, would, we would show you the, uh, I'm gonna have to open this with a knife and not pierce any party balloons. So let's go with the end I can see. Um, I thought that we would go, let's go with what looks, what looks best, best on screen. Blue, blue, sure. Um, thought we'd, I thought we'd do it live. I thought, I thought we'd do all the weirdness live on camera. Also, I have green tea with Jasmine today because I'm already a little bit anxious and hyper, so. 
a little bit less caffeine. Yes, I know green tea does still have caffeine. Please don't tell me about it. <laughs> so we have a balloon. We have, uh, where's it? Ah, here we go. We have some, some of the, uh, the coupon papers that they insist on sending me constantly. And we have a spool of packing tape. And what we're going to attempt to do, what we don't have is a pencil. Uh, I want to draw on my picture. Ah, pen. Good. Um, basically, what we're trying to do is if this, let's, let's hold this up into the focus zone. Um, if this is our goose body, I'm trying to make a core that is basically the same shape that will touch the desk um, and fill this space. Because then when this starts to get drier, what we're going to do, probably won't, won't show you this, honestly, it's not that exciting. Although I don't know, it's like a reveal. What we'll do is turn it over, stab that balloon with something sharp. And that balloon will shrink, making all of this loose. And then we'll pull all of that interior out. A little bit of paper sticks, that's fine. Paper, a small amount of flammable material is okay for inside a kiln, as long as it's not too much. Um, we'll pull all that out, and then we'll have a hollow goose. That, at least, is the plan. Whether we manage it or not, I don't know. I've never done anything this big before. I thought it would be fun to experiment. So uh, let's blow up a balloon. Might be a bit big. I also don't want it to be too fragile or I'll probably accidentally explode it while I'm working. So. Goose balloon. That seems good. Never worried about tying a balloon off on camera before. There we go. Okay, balloon. All the sharp things are away from, yes, good. <laughs> all of the sharp things are away from my, from my balloon. They're all over here. It's safe. Okay, so now we have balloon. We need a sort of we need a tail. So let's let's see, let's see, let's cut some paper. and make sort of a cone shape for the tail. Now like this, long ways. I am making this up as I go along in case anyone was under any misapprehension that I'd planned any of this. And then we're gonna take a tiny piece of tape probably be using scotch tape for this but packing tape is what's right there so roughly roughly goose shaped um, but this is not supportive so what we want to do I'm gonna pull this out a little bit because then I'm going to put that on the bottom because no, we'll cover it. And then we'll fill this with this balloon. <laughs> balloon. <laughs> Stay on screen. This is the most weirdly chaotic start to a stream ever. I like, guess yeah, blow up a balloon and, and, and tear some paper apart. That'll be fine. So I'm going to stuff this with paper. 
sorry for the loud tearing noises. Let me know if the audio is turned up too loud for the for the horror that's in taking place right now. And uh, so that's going to make it supportive and sturdy because we wanted to support the weight of clay. And then, you know what, I think I do have scotch tape somewhere around here. I thought I did. I have Sculpey and a rolling pin. Nope, no scotch tape. How about over here? A hedgehog pencil sharpener and some vampire teeth. Well, that's not what I expected to find. Just put those away. <laughs> So now we need to attach this to the balloon and this whole process must be done without breaking this balloon. We must not break this balloon. If we break the balloon we have failed and we must start over. <laughs> so a little bit more tape. It doesn't have to be, uh, doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to just has to be attached. Um, I originally decided I would use packing tape because packing tape is very slick and shiny, so it's less likely to stick to the clay. I tell myself. All right, so we have a balloon body, a goose tail. I think we probably need to build out the goose front a little bit. Because they've got sort of that nice poofy chest. So, yeah. Smooth that out. Oh no, we're coming un unstuck already. So. Goose chest. Um, like that, maybe. Folding some things down here. <laughs> no failing goose brisket. Hello, they might be scientists. I'm uh, I'm here with chaos. If anyone is just tuning in and wonders what's happening, you thought this was a pottery stream. Um, as I said on Twitter, I'm doing all the stuff that they edit out of the uh, they edit out of the great pottery throwdown. Um, I'm building the interior of a goose sculpture, a good sized goose sculpture. Um, the biggest ceramic sculpture I have ever made, in fact. So, that's fun. It's 3D. I must make sure that all of my sides match. Goose tail goes up in the air. Goose belly goes down. Yes. Okay. Almost there. Almost there, and then you can stop hearing me pull packing tape loudly off of a packing tape roll. Goose. 
This is, I feel, I feel okay about this as a goose interior. I'm, uh, one more piece of tape here. Well, maybe two more pieces of tape. I want to make sure that that all of this is contained and, and doesn't get stuck in the clay. So, sort of trying to to tape down any bits that are sticking up to create fewer surfaces for clay to get stuck on when I pull it up. So loud, so loud. Um, Now, a little, a little crooked, a little, that's okay, because, so this is the top, and to remember that, let's see, uh, just draw a, a top O goose line here. There we go. Aha, uh -huh. I see what's happened. I did not turn my light on. It's starting to get dark. Okay, so the balloon and paper get removed before it gets fired. The point of the balloon is that it's full of air, so if I stab it, it becomes very small, which will create a big void inside the piece once it's almost dry. And I can use that void to pull out the rest of this. If a little bit of paper gets left in, that's okay. It will burn out in the firing um, pretty easily. Um, but we don't want any tape or balloon left in there. And you don't want a lot of paper because if you create a lot of smoke, you start to create a different firing atmosphere. You can ruin other people's pieces. It's not ideal. So. Gonna. This is dangerous. I'm trying to trim this piece of tape, but ah, you know what I have? I have a Leatherman. I have a Leatherman right here with a pair of scissors in it somewhere. There we go. Because my scissors are too far away. Oh. So yeah, we want most of this to be out of it before we fire. Where was the thing I was cutting? There it is. Um, and I'm trying to eliminate little sticking up bits that might get stuck in the clay. There. So, so. Now we have a balloon base that's sort of rolled away off of both cameras because of course it has balloon base for making a large goose sculpture. But now you ask, what do we do with this balloon base? Well, we put it very carefully over here. This is a piece of plexiglass we're just gonna put it on when we work on it. But for what we need right now, plexiglass under it. Do not roll away a balloon off camera. Because what we need now are some, some decently thick slabs of clay. So, I must get out some clay from off camera and also figure out what I did with my wire tool. It is somewhere in this bin. There it is. But can I get to it? Oh, hey, you know what? I've already got one piece. This piece is not big enough. Or damp enough, really. Oh, where can you go? You can live over here. And another big piece. The sound of the clay bag.
that piece might not be big enough. Oh well. So, this is my good red clay. Good red Navajo wheel with grog. And what we want to do is take that rolling pin I mentioned having. and uh, do some rolling out. Rolling it in both directions makes it less likely to warp. A pile of sponges that are getting away. And that's good because warping is bad. And we're just creating, that's pretty good. Try and make it sure that it's uniform. Like rolling out a cookie, a cookie sheet. Um, hello, Hannah, my mod, Hannah, my mod. So we've got a slab, and now we're gonna do the same. This one needs a little bit of of work before we roll. Need to get it a little bit thinner. Yes, Hannah, stabber of bots, champion of the stream. Get this a little just, that's probably an okay start before I make it too uneven. Bowl. At some point I'm going to clean this workspace. I'm going to go through all the stuff that's sitting to the side of this of this perfect square that's on camera. And I'm going to wash the table. It's going to be so cool. Yeah, don't don't live stream when ill. It doesn't. If you live stream when you're feeling sick, what you get is the start of my Stardew Valley playthrough. That's what happens if you're like, I'm getting a cold. I don't know when I'm gonna stream. I don't feel up to it. I guess I'll do <laughs> cowboy voices and write a Cthulhu story about Stardew Valley. Is what happens when you stream sick. All right, getting there, getting there. I think we're gonna have to get more clay and do another slab. I think, I think we're gonna need some more coverage here. This is a big bird that we're making. I've been, I've been maddeningly ambitious. Um, oh, can I keep knocking that camera? <laughs> yeah, you you too could have started uh, turning turning the world's most lovable, charming game into a horror story. We should go back to Stardew Valley, you guys. We got a chicken the last time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, getting there. So we really need another piece that's about this size. No, balloon. We're now taking bets on how long before I break the balloon. Ooh, I'm gonna be on Hannah's TV. That's exciting. Make it to the big times, cast to the TV. Just in time for for my new focus controlling software. There is another kind of clay <laughs> on my wire tool I've just discovered. 
So there's going to be a little bit of buff clay mixed in here because uh, because I didn't notice. And now it's on my hands. Did not wash stuff from Monday. When I threw, Monday I threw the base of a teapot, so we might decorate another teapot um, at the next stream. Not next week, but the week after, maybe. But yeah, for now, um, I don't know if we're gonna, I don't know how far. Um, again, no, I don't think it'll be a sheep. The sheep teapot is an undertaking that I'm not sure I can do live. I say foolishly as I start an epic sculpture instead. Um, no, what I've, so here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing about sheep teapot, um, and teapot, building teapots in general. Um, is that uh, actually a slab building a teapot is like really complicated. <laughs> it involves a pattern and math and measuring. Um, and it's, I think it's more things that I am capable of doing at once on stream. Um, I'm not super great at thinking while talking. One of the fun, I'm just going to fold this and see if that goes horribly wrong. Um, one of the fun challenges of doing this, in fact, is the fact that it requires me to think less than I usually do um, when I'm making something. I have to make decisions with, uh, with less consideration and hope for the best because I have to do too many things at once. I have to read and talk and also make. Um, and I think that that's probably good for me. Um, it's good to, to force myself to, to let go of, um, of the fact that I consider everything for a long time before I do it. But it also means that things that actually demand planning, like careful planning to work, like building a slab teapot are just too difficult to do live, really, because it involves too much silent thinking. So this is too much clay. Now, <laughs> the last time was too little. Just gonna, just gonna pull it apart like I'm like I'm making a pizza a little bit. Speed this up, there we go. Speed this up, try not to keep hitting the, the camera with the end of my rolling pin. And good, good, good. And that's about the same thickness. I need a stabby thing. Cut off the extraneous bits to use in a minute. <laughs> ah. But look, look how in focus this is now. I know that this is out of focus and I could probably switch that back and forth. What I need is is a, a push button way to switch focus. Um, and that's a thing I don't have yet. But but at least I can set my focus. And that will be helpful. Okay, so. So. We've got some slabs. I'm gonna roll them this way for a minute. Carefully not hitting the, there we go, okay. Now, another thing that we need, and this is, um, this is the innovation that I have, have 
took me it took me like a day to figure out how this was gonna work. Um, yeah, like a guitar pedal. Like I need I need some kind of so. There's. I'm gonna I'm gonna risk I'm gonna risk the mouse. Just get the mouse onto the. Let's let's do some technical stuff. There's a little control panel. And uh, and it's got some presets. Um, and I can. Can, I think I can save the profile. Look at us doing technical stuff instead of making art. I'm going to call it that. Um, so I think that I can... So that... Now it's in, now it's in focus for me to roll clay. Put my mouse back. Um, on the table. So now we're in focus on the table. Hooray. Just in time to wobble the camera while we roll ourselves a coil. But yeah, oh, a guitar. I Basically, I, I need to push like a, a, a trigger button that I can hit to switch between focuses because I don't really need a bunch of focuses. What I really need is just this long focus and then that, that close focus. It's basically the focuses that are required here. It occurs to me that we may need this neck to be hollow, but I, I think we might have to, to deal with that when we come to it, because I don't have a plan, because my plan was to... Ah, oh, I don't have a guitar here, here a drum kick pedal, but I wonder if I could. Um, this is not the gooseneck. This is, uh, to put, for, for lack of a better explanation, this is the goose feet. So, I'm not really worried about how round they are. I just need a Put this over here. I just need a coil. Because, and I'm going to flatten it a little bit, because I need this to not tip over, basically. Um, so, in service of that, this is all going to start with a foot. Um, the other purpose of this maybe needs to be a little bit narrower. We'll pinch part of it in. Um, the other purpose of this foot is to give me a big hollow opening at the base. So it will be easy for me to get in there and pull out anything that's stuck inside. I, so I want something that's big enough to at least, like, if not get my whole hand into, at least get, like, a, a pair of tweezers through um, and be able to sort of work it around. Um, and then we're going to uh, sort of press it down to, to this plastic so that it's got a hard base to work on. And then... And then we'll we'll nudge it in around the goose. And make sure that it's the right size. And then Remember we put a line on there? Put a line on there so I would remember where the top was. So, make sure that that's actually on the top. 
and that is going to hold our goose up. So now that that's set up, what we're going to do is cover it, which means we're going to cut the sort of most basic version of the shape with a lot of extra space around it. And there's one half. <laughs> I have sub I have subverted your expectations. Hannah, it is not a gooseneck. Hey Auntie! Auntie Shepherd is here. Auntie Shepherd is here for the for the strange beginning of, of Goose. Um, I do not have enough space to make something this large, it turns out. So let's put that there. Cut the same general shape out of this side. Squidging up our spare clay for sculpting. Okay. Now, uh, now comes the weird fun part. We're gonna, um, oops. <laughs> we're gonna try and make this happen. Uncharted territory, friends. I don't know what I'm doing. Besides the fact that, oh look, there's that seam line that I did again. Thank you, seam line. Besides the fact that I need for this to be shaped to match there. Oh, let me let me fiddle with the focus again because that seems fun. Let's let's get more clay on my mouse. Nope, nope, too far. Focus. Yeah, <laughs> that so yeah, that's um, I thought I thought that that would be fun. Is the uh, the the will 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 the balloon pop or not? Will I be able to hold to hold this into shape? No, probably not. Um, how will I make this work? Do I slab build like this ever? No, not really. <laughs> oh no, they don't match. They don't meet at the top because I forgot that I needed more of a base. Okay, so so the uh, the danger the danger to the balloon grows less with every passing moment. Um, as, as I carefully seal it away inside of this shell, as I, as I carefully use these slabs to try to cover it in clay, the balloon becomes safer and safer. Until eventually, there will be nothing to harm it. Yes, I am creating a protective goose shell. A protective. Okay, this this tail end is going to be a trial later. So I'm going to attempt to not. I'm going to be careful when I seal it off to not trap paper in there. 
Okay. Now, let's let's use some tools. That's right, tools. This is the the balloon is in danger again. I have clay tools out. They have sharp edges. Anything could happen. But I want to make sure that these are well sealed and well joined because we're going to add a bunch of stuff on top of it, um, including some clay thickness. So we can go up to about an inch and we're going to be adding things like texture and feathers and adding some things to shape since because of the way we've done this we aren't, oh no, we first our first hole. Uh, because of the way we've done this we can't go inside and do much shaping because we've filled it so we're gonna have to to do a lot of our shaping by adding clay weight which is why I made these walls pretty thin because I wanted to be able to alter also you can you can feel the squishiness of the balloon ah Um, oh, Auntie Shepherd, you call dibs on everything I make. I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if that's fair. Um, goose, special goose dibs. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Ah. Uh, keep making a hole right there. That bit of that bit of paper is definitely going to stick in this clay. And we're just going to have to deal with it in the future. That's that is future Sarah's problem. Current Sarah just needs to to seal this seam. Seal this seam nicely. So see, here's my thing, right? If you go up to a, a Canadian goose and, and do anything with it, then you deserve to be assaulted by a goose. I don't know why people are confused about the fact that those are not uh, domesticated geese. <laughs> but if you're going to be like that, don't don't do it. That goose is not your friend. Okay. I'm going to take this slab that I neatly rolled. Use it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I've got a sharp thing near the balloon, everyone. Oh, it's so dangerous. Look at this. Look at this sharp, stabby thing that I've got. Um, but yeah, they're like wild geese. It's like if you go up to a deer and the deer kicks you, that's your fault. <laughs> You're an idiot. Don't do that. Just, you know. Just saying. No, the goose has a baby. She can't hold a sword. She has to hide all of her all of her goslings. A reminder for people who who missed the start. This is our sketch, um, along with a bunch of other drawings I've done of geese for reference. But this is this is the sketch of what we are attempting to achieve, more or less. Um, don't know if we'll get there. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I don't know. I don't feel like I have not actually that oft said that that often so far on the stream. I don't know what I'm doing. It's a stab in the dark. I'm making this up as I go. But today, today we're really going for it. I watched too much great pottery throwdown, and now, and now I too want to be cool and make uh, make crazy large animal sculptures. The goose can have a little tiny sword, yeah. I mean, 
I could just scatter tiny swords all around them. <laughs> you know, like they've slain a bunch of knights. Just a whole lot of, of knights murdered by geese. Arcraft, thank you for bringing up Leon the Gander. Thank you, thank you for, for not making me do it. I'm so excited that I'm not the only one who still thinks of Hero the Hen and Leon the Gander, the characters that have never been drawn and who haven't actually had a story told, but I keep bringing up anyway. Um, ooh, goose! You could have a goose, a goose sword pommel. That would be nice. Let's a tiny crown of swords. Ah, uh, our geese have become so martial. All right, let's stick this on. Oh dear. Um, so yeah, watch too much Great Pottery Third and now now want to do weird specific things that they that they do on episodes. Um, also, this has been reminding me of um, where my grandparents lived when I was a kid. Near there, there was a a duck decoy museum. Um, or like it sort of had a, like a little history of 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 duck decoys, but then the rest of it was like a crazy like museum of wood carved birds, and they had like a competition every year, and it was just these incredible carved bird sculptures made of with tiny details made of wood. Um, this is making me think of that. And as I was saying that, I was not reading chat and I see we've gotten all the way to Goose Witcher <laughs> which is uh, a whole other thing and now I have Toss a Coin to Your Witcher stuck in my head again because I do now every time someone says Toss a Coin to your whatever okay are we are we mostly are we mostly secured are we mostly how close are we here where where is okay because tail goes in air and, and and chest goes on the ground and we want the balloon to, to, to kind of go in a little bit. So, we're nearly, nearly there. We need some more here, I can feel. But the front is pretty, pretty good. Okay. Okay. the balloon is yes I have a patreon if you want to toss a coin to uh, to your artist oh chat stream of plenty uh, oh this feels so weird <laughs> I wish I wish all of you had the chance to just come here and just gently squeeze <laughs> this this clay covered balloon it's uh it's a very odd sensation um anyway that that is that is the base of our of our goose i am going to to add some of this coil while i make it a little bit smaller Yes. Oh, 
Oh, uh oh, Andy Shepard. The last time I gently squeezed something that round, dot dot dot. What? What? What happened? Did a lamb come out? <laughs> oh no, that's not a happy story. Why were you gently squeezing it? Just to see. I'm gonna add to this foot here. I'm gonna add a coil. To second second camera. You know what? Let's try oh oh let's try and do this so second camera can see what I'm doing. Yes. Cause I'm not looking, I'm doing it by feel. So we'll see. Oh yeah, that's that's fair. You do have to do that before you eat it. Agriculture. Now we're just uh, patching things by feel. I can already tell that we're gonna need some uh, some extra support in the back here. Okay. Need some slab in a vaguely triangle shape. And I'll just Score and slip it. Mmm, <laughs> breakfast. All right. So, one thing that is already happening that you can see on camera two is there's some gentle splitting because the weight of the clay pushes the balloon out to the side. And the balloon being malleable just expands that way, pushing the clay on the sides out some. So, that's a thing to address at some point. Um, we can always clean up, I say we, I can always clean up this base later. So I don't need, or the, I mean, I say the base, the very, the bottom, the part that's sitting on the, uh, on the plastic. I can tidy up at the very end once it's leather hard. So that I'm not super worried about. What I am worried about is having enough support. So. Get all that clay on there so that we can make sure that there is no goose collapse because that would be a problem and we don't want a goose collapse. But so far, so good. Besides the fact that this is a very fat goose because of balloon expansion. We've got a pretty good, <laughs> your swords are very supportive. Mmm, dinner. Enjoy dinner, Auntie Shepherd. Um, so. 
so, so, so. I need tail to go up in the air. And the chest to be down on the surface. So I'm just altering some stuff here to help make that happen. And then I'm gonna gently shape the tail a little bit just because I want it to get that good narrow point. Okay. Another interesting thing about this particular method of uh, doing sculpture and doing large ceramic sculpture is that um, there's not a lot I can do about it now. <laughs> This, this is the shape of the goose, for better or worse. This is what it is. This is what I have to work with. Um, this is the, this is the shape and scale. This is the goose. And I'm gonna keep nudging it like, there we go. Ah! tools on the floor. Um, so yeah, so this is stressful for me because I like to fiddle with things until the very end. And, uh, and I don't get to change this. This is just, this is just what it is now. <laughs> Nest of swords. Ah, uh, just, you know, sharp things everywhere. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna just take a minute here to to do some some general tidying. Um, you'll be happy to know that now, for the most part, the balloon is safe. The balloon is encased in like a quarter inch of clay. It's pretty safe now. I'm gonna wad up all this clay. Yes, the balloon the balloon is encased in in a in a protective goose. Oh, they might be scientists. I love. Okay, this is we're we're going with this story. So, um, they might be scientists. Says I love the idea of a goose with swords. Like to be a knight, you have to charm the goose into giving you a sword, which I think is genius. You have to convince a goose to bestow a sword upon you. That's that's how you become a knight. The Lady of the Lake was actually a goose. King Arthur changed it to sound better. I was like, yeah, there was a beautiful woman. She had seven goslings. <laughs> Squire goes up to it to a sort nest, and there's a goose with its wings spread hissing at them. And they have to come back with like gifts and spend days sitting quietly nearby. To politely charm the goose. Okay, I've made this ball of clay. So now I think the, tr the key will be, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use some some dampness here, which is not necessarily a great idea, but I've done it. So, so it's too late now. Just gonna 
try and, and really smooth down this seam. Create a more uniform goose shape. For our for our, our base, our goose base. Um, so here, here's the tricky thing. What really needs to happen is uh, this base needs to set some. It needs to become stiffer. It needs to be a harder, less damp, less malleable clay. Because the more weight we put on this, the more this squeezy balloon <laughs> will start to sink under the weight. Um, warping our goose, and no one wants a warped goose. Uh, Hannah, write the, write, write the young adult novel. Write it. <laughs> It'll be great. The real treasure was the friends we made along the way. He learned empathy and patience and kindness. And the value of, of time spent in quiet contemplation. It'll be great. Yeah, I don't know that I ever made friends with uh, with pond ducks or geese either. Um, I definitely, I definitely had things they wanted to possess, mostly sandwiches, but that felt less like friendship, more like open theft. <laughs> you know, they were just looking for an angle. The goose riders of Park. Oh, night's both foul and fair. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, get that pun in there. See, now, now I'm just over, now I'm just over smoothing this. The geese can hear your thoughts. Yeah, so every time every time someone someone on Twitter is like anti goose, you're like goose are geese are mean. I just I at this point now I wanna be like, oh no, you're you're confusing that with the goose game. I have bad news for you. That was you. <laughs> that was you all along. You were the goose. You were the jerk. The whole time. That was not Geese, that was you. Um, although I did play Untitled Goose Game and I was a huge jerk to everyone all the time and it was amazing. And I enjoyed it. <laughs> what can I say? I enjoyed stealing and breaking every tumbler in the pub. Wow, the breathe geese that breathe fire. Oh no. Not everything can breathe fire. They uh they instead beat their wings and create like little tornado wind attacks. I don't know how I made this some sort of Pokémon adventure, but but geese are wind type, I guess. I don't I don't play Pokémon, you guys. <laughs> I don't actually know. I don't actually know what I'm talking about. Ah, oh, it's can you, can you yes, I know it's a continuation of the pern joke, but I feel like we need to to branch out slightly from 
from just making geese dragons. I feel like they need some of their own individual ass individual assets and skills. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Hannah. Like we, we may, we, I think oh, I'm too close to the second camera, aren't I? Um, I think we may end up having too many things breathe fire. <laughs> I know, I know. Seems, seems impossible. Too much fire breathing. Madness. But we really, we really do go straight to the fire breathing pretty regularly, it turns out. So I recognize that this bit of the adventure was not exactly riveting entertainment. Um, although for me, it's very relaxing. But um, but we will we will move on soon. I promise. Um, I just want to make sure that this is a really well sealed sturdy base before I just sort of set it aside and leave it alone for a while because that's what's coming is uh, it just it needs to set it needs to spend some time getting stiffer before I add stuff to it I was not going to wait but uh, but the balloon inside is is just so so squidgy that uh that I'm I am concerned for its well-being if I do not let it firm some Oh, is it soothing to watch? Well, that's good. I'm glad that this is soothing to watch. And yes, they might be scientists lives in the future. There, it's already Saturday. We are still stuck in the past of Friday. All right. Well, I'm glad that our craft brought it up earlier because I was thinking that next week I might go back and finally actually do something with Hero the Hen and Leon the Gander besides uh, bring them up constantly and never explain myself. Ooh. Look at all these squidgy balloon fissures going on on this side. So dangerous. Let's Let's smooth that out and hope that we can Solve that problem with some slip and water. Just just smooth out. So yeah, next week, I thought. It's, uh, you know, I thought we might go back to uh, To my, to my very own bird D&D characters that I never really explained, but bring up constantly and do that for an art stream, largely because I expect next Friday to be hectic and frustrating. <laughs> so I feel like I might want to do something calm and easy. At the end of it, I say at the end of it, in the middle of the afternoon of it. But mostly at the end of it. You know. Ah. 
one, one, one thirty in on Saturday, having some brunch in a far off land of the future. They might be scientists. An arc, an aircraft in the other side of the world. Very first thing in the morning. Or, as he puts it, the end of the night. All right. Um, it feels like we're about there. Um, by the way, I try not to use pronouns when I reference people in chat unless I am sure of them. So, uh, so if I accidentally do misuse a pronoun for you, please don't hesitate to let me know. And I will be sure to be careful about it in the future. Uh, I had not brought that up before, I don't think, but I just realized that I I pronounced our craft. And I wanted to be certain that everyone knew that uh, it's okay to correct me if I mispronoun you. I try not to, but... But if I get ahead of myself and I've invented a gender for you, let me know. And yes, they might be scientists. Time zones are weird. Um, you know what's even harder is the fact that we have daylight savings time here. So sometimes uh, Pacific time is different. <laughs> so sometimes when I tell you a time, it's, it's a different time than it was the last time I told you. Um, and I'm bad at figuring that out. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about about shape base here, but I need to prop this up, I think. So I'm going to nope, I'm going to construct a tower. I think I'm going to somewhere I have the right size tube. There we go. Yes. I'm going to construct a tower to hold up the tail so that we don't sink. And then, um, and then it's uh, 4.37, so what I think I might do is take a little break, uh, make a little bit more tea wash some tools um, because then what we'll do when we come back I'll have moved this to the side and we'll do some detail work that I can cover up and attach later like uh, like we'll do the head I think will be nice um, so we'll do maybe the, the the mom head and the gosling head and then wrap those up neatly in plastic and I think that might be all we managed today um, what I may do is, as I work on this, I'll record myself um, without streaming and then make a time lapse of it uh, for finishing up because we're definitely not going to finish it today. We were never going to finish it today, which is one of the reasons that I wasn't sure about doing it because uh, I usually try and uh, and pick projects that I know I can get decent work done on. So, uh, so this is more of a, hey, look, this is the beginning of something complicated. And, uh, I thought that would be interesting. Anyway, um, oh no, I've just learned that Europe and the U.S. switch between daylight savings time and proper time at different dates, which is terrible, and so does Australia. Why? Why would the world do that to us? Oh, and I've learned that they might be scientists. Has a D and D group that that uh, that has time zone issues. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take a quick break. Um, continue chatting amongst yourselves. As usual, I'll give you a task.
Your task is to name the goose. She is a goose. She has a gosling. So good luck with that. <laughs> good luck naming the goose with no head and just a vague body shape. I'll be back in a few minutes, and we'll uh, and we'll do some more. Ah, oh, I have to move a bunch of windows now. I'll be back in a few minutes, and we will carry on making a goose head.
and back. My computer has rotated so I cannot see chat. I will attempt to fix it. Hi, Viworm. Welcome to today's madness. Where, oh, so we got Gertrude. Gertrude is the name of the goose. And, uh, and it looks like Gunther is the gosling, is what I'm getting here. So, I, I am back. I have returned. I'm going to find a slightly damp sponge here. I have thousands of sponges just out. And uh, now I've moved. You may notice the body. The body of the goose is gone. I've moved it. You probably saw me behind my pop-up break banner moving it to the back of the desk um, so I don't have to work over it. Just cleaning some tools a bit here so that they work. And now we're going to do, reminder, this is our goose design. Yes, I hid the body well. Um, it's gone. Um, I mean, so then now we're going to do um, heads to give you guys some interesting sculpture stuff because I can't put more weight on that until it's just firmer. Um, if you want to see, second camera will go on an adventure. There is where I have stashed the goose body. And it will just back around to trying to get it to point at the... There we go. Do not need the rolling pin anymore. Should probably clean the rolling pin. Eh, it's fine. Um, also should cover my clay. Now that I look down, while, while we're here, let's just uh, not dry that out. Okay, so as I said, there's not a lot I can do to change the shape of the body at this point, or the scale. So I'm gonna make heads. I'm gonna make goose heads separate from the bodies, and then I'm going to cover them and attach them later. But that means we're going to have to do some figuring. So, the head that I've got here is about one-third of the body. So, let's measure the body. Yeah, you missed you missed all of the balloon tension, fireworm. You missed. Uh... Oh, have I? Oh no, the camera. That's <laughs> ah, my little tripod tipping sideways. Why camera? Oh dear. Oh, that made it much worse. Camera, stop wobbling. Stop wobbling and point at the table like you're meant to. Good, good, maybe. Anyway, um, we're gonna measure this goose body back here, which is about a foot, well, 11 inches, 11 inches. So a foot divided by three is four inches, 11 divided by three, is a different number, uh, like three point something. <laughs> Math. Um, so goose had a little less than four inches. Well, four inches. We'll make it kind of larger because we're gonna add thickness. So let's go with like a four-ish inch goose head. So, hey, piece of convenient cardboard. You will be. my template. 
And if the goose head is that long, and the gosling is about the size of the bill, and the bill is about not quite half the head. So I know this all this planning. And so if like here's the the bill. And there's the head, then gosling is like an inch. Gosling and goose head. Okay. Now the balloon is safely inside of a goose body. Sitting to the back, it is time to do some sculpture. Now that you've seen the uh, the dark inner workings, it's time to actually do some sculpture. So, this is the scale. Let's. Uh, oh, hey, that was all of the wrong buttons. I'm just gonna put this mouse right in the middle of the camera <laughs> because I've lost all of my settings. Um, so we're just gonna, nope, we're just gonna change the focus, oh no, that is the right focus, good, that is the right setting. We have done it, so while we're here, you know what, it could, it could be a little brighter, actually, frankly, we could, we could have a little bit more light in our picture. Good. Yeah, that's right. I have I have controls now. So, um, I have camera controls. For those of you that missed the beginning of the stream, I bought a program. So now we're in focus for sculpting right there. So, I have tea, a ball of clay, the goose body setting up. Let's make ourselves a goose head. <coughs> Excuse me. I know. I've sculpted an amazing computer mouse. Um, so let's let's see. I'm gonna try and get a good a good basic shape to start with here. We can always add to it, but a good basic goose shape. So, so goose head and goose bill rough, rough, the rough shape of a goose head and goose bill. About here like this. It's about, it's about right. Uh, let's, I set the focus for a reason. <laughs> let's use it. Goose head. Goose bill. Model. So, I'm just gonna prop my reference up here on a sponge, which is like the uh, the worst the worst idea. There we go. Basic geese. PSL the demograph the democratic centralist socialist org. What's happening in chat right now? I got confused. Um, this is, anyway, this is the basic goose shape. And now we're gonna, now that you've been so patient and watched me and watched me go on a balloon adventure, we're gonna sculpt a goose head. We're gonna be 
We're gonna be more like more like the usual stream. Um so Gooseheads goose ge geese ge gooses. Geese have really great cheeks. Um is your fact for the day. They've got they've got good round good round cheeks. Add a little bit of clay. Um, I think for this whole thing, we're going to be a little bit less precise than I usually am with the bird sculpts and a little bit more organic, more like the sheep bowls, rougher edges, adding stuff. PSL like pumpkin spice latte. I don't know. I'm so confused chat, but let's make goose cheeks. Um, yeah, they've got they've got good cheeks. Um, it's just it's just a, a thing that geese have is good cheeks. Good round cheeks. So eyes go like there. Then they've got good round cheeks. And I'm going to be adding more clay than I usually do. You know how I sort of do like the chickadees where I was just taking one shape and basically turning it into a bird. Um, this is a little bit more freeform madness, frankly. I uh, don't know what I'm doing. I'm just making things up as I go along. I'm, I'm about 100 feet from a 727 pound cheese biome. I don't, that's, uh, that's a lot of cheese. I don't know how many pounds are in a ton, but it feels like a lot of cheese. An unnecessary amount of cheese, if you will. Uh, yeah, I get made fun of when I go home to Tennessee for the holidays, um, because I always expect more in cheese than, than the South is prepared to provide. <laughs> like, but where is the fancy cheese? And they're like, it's here. <laughs> it's a different kind of cheddar. Unusual. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I just really like cheese, you guys. Why can't you have fancy fun cheese? Okay. I'm gonna try and, and create the, the sort of the flat planes of goose here. Get the kind of have, and then it goes down like that. Now I'm just talking to myself about the shape of goose bills. But that's fine. <laughs> what else is this stream for? But facts like that. All right. I am humming the Mandalorian theme to myself in my head in case anyone's curious. That's, uh, that's why whenever I go silent. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Yeah, that's just what's happening. So. Mm, feels off. Feels like 
Feels like too much bill. Yep, slightly too much bill. <laughs> too much bill, not enough goose. Add some clay. It's all wet enough that adding clay should be fine. I'm telling myself politely. Anyone watching this after the fact? Chat is still discussing weight of cheese um, this whole time. <laughs> um. Yeah, we're get we're getting there, Auntie Shepherd. We're getting there. We're still doing basic shape. Still, still just trying to get the the shape of the uh, of the head down and the proportions right. All right. And then more of a, there we go. That's more of the right slope. Take some clay off, I think. Make some, some hard edges to work with here. Yep, that's a bit better. Uh, probably a little bit narrower. Comes in more here. And here. Yeah, new sculpture process. Don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, well, what I have is this photo of a goose. Oh, and this photo of a goose, because I needed reference. So, uh, this is where, this is where they're, they're on the bill. I don't know the internal structure of goose nostrils. Um, this is the best goose photo in the world. I needed a good, I needed a good, um, front, front facing goose. Image. You know, sometimes, sometimes you need a good, a good 3D view. Um, it's a good photo. I think you can probably also find it if you Google, um, Goose looking at camera, I think, is what I googled. Um, you're getting a breeding pair of cotton patch geese. Yay! Cotton patch geese are adorable. I drew one the other day. I'm trying to, uh... Trying to mimic my 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 staring at camera goose view here. Yeah. Lines there. Well, I mean. But geese, but geese are lovely if you aren't mean to them. And they aren't wild animals you're accosting. <sighs> okay. Getting there. I'm 
Getting there, getting there. Yep, Mandalorian theme humming in my head again. Ooh, splitting the flock. Manti Shepard is splitting the flock to use two rams. They each get their own, their own group of ladies. Okay. Bottom of goose head is pretty flat, frankly. It connects pretty, pretty closely to the uh, to the build. There's ah, uh, I've still I've somehow created this gap. I will fix it with clay. Adding bits of clay and hoping that this is an okay way to sculpt with ceramic. <laughs> it's how I sculpt with other things. Back in the day of using plasticine for figure sculpting classes. Which is really back in the day, you guys, like the 90s back in the day. I kind of hate plasticine, so I haven't really used it since. Oh, Rap Lamb birthed her remix this week. I like it. That's a great way to put it. Oh man, Sculpey. I use I I've used Sculpey quite a bit, but I used to cast things in resin when I used Sculpey, um, for the most part, because it just doesn't create like it requires a lot of effort to like paint and make look nice, and it's still just I don't know. There's something about the sort of permanence and feeling of like fired ceramic that makes something feel. I don't know what the best way to put it is. More... Not... Yeah, more permanent, more... More, more of a solid object. I don't know. Like it grew that way automatically, like it just it was... Like it was born that way instead of made, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, there's something, it just, something about firing ceramic and having a thing that comes out. Um, just the object that comes out then feels organic in a way that, that resin cast and, and like painted Sculpey doesn't for me. It feels like you've, turned it into all one solid permanent object with magic and fire. <laughs> and I think that that's, I don't know, that appeals to me. Um, resin casting is also just super toxic. And uh, I try not to do it anymore. <laughs> all right. All right. Getting there, getting there. Got our, our very good goose cheeks. Um, we need more, more cheek down here. They need to be rounder, it turns out. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's porcelain. Ah, yes. It's, uh... Something about the transformative... <laughs> Can't talk today. Something about the transformative process of firing. 
uh, add something to the work. Add something to the work that I that I quite enjoy. Besides just permanence, I mean, it makes a unless you unless you break it, it's it's a pretty permanent solid object. And that in and of itself is kind of cool. It doesn't really degrade over time. Um, and anything made from any kind of plastic product does degrade over time. Um, resin, fiberglass, all that kind of stuff. It chemically changes as time passes. Sometimes very slowly, but still happening. So. So work in porcelain. I don't know why I'm like a hard selling you guys pottery as a, as a, as a medium. Don't know. Uh... Well, as I'm doing this, I've come up with another problem, which is this definitely needs to be hollow um, or hollowed, which means the neck is going to need to be hollow too, which means I don't know. <laughs> That's going to be a thing. Yeah, that's the, that's uh they might be scientists as I mean, we find clay stuff from thousands of years ago. And it's cool to see what you were doing and see that connection. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it depends. Uh, are you cooking over a fire in an oven? Um, you may need a higher higher firing temperature than I do to to create modern stovetop cooking vessels. Um, although I don't know, pit firing cooking vessels has been going on for for forever. It's true, but the ancient Greeks had large room-sized kilns, and I bet they could fire higher at a higher temperature than my little electric kilns can. So there. Um, but no, it it should be it should be possible to make cooking vessels in like a an open like a pit fire. So I don't, I don't it's temperature and longevity and how likely your cooking vessel is to crack as you heat it up. Um, to the cooking temperature. You know, like how some things you get at the Japanese dollar store have don't microwave written on them. <laughs> a wee, a wee, just, just a wee amphora, not, not a, not a full sized amphora, just, just a, a little one. Okay. Gonna square this off some. I say square it off. I mean just make it slightly longer. Although they are they are more rectangular than circular in skull shape. Oh, an amphoret. Um I I don't hmm. I don't know if that's that's how one creates diminutives in Greek. Um, yeah, that's, I think, uh, Monty Shepard, you'd need to treat clay cooking vessels like cast iron and uh, slowly preheat them 
rather than just slapping them on high heat. Although, the cool thing is that if you fire to a high enough temperature and vitrify enough, um, you don't have to heat them up as slowly and you can slap them on a higher heat and heat them up faster. Which is cool, because now we can heat things really, really hot, because science and gas. Um, I say we, I can't, <laughs> but, but out there in the world, there are people who can. I, I didn't think it was how you'd make a Greek diminutive. A Greek diminutive would be Ampharisgos. That's adorable. It's adorable and I'm mispronouncing it, but that's okay. Okay, this is a pretty good basic shape here. I'm gonna start marking out where some things go. Like, there's the... Like that. Making sure I'm kind of even. On each side. Sketching in where some things go. Across the bottom. Yeah, I don't, my school did not did not offer ancient Greek either. Our craft it was a, uh, or French as it turns out. Just for some reason, uh, Latin. And Spanish. The for some reason was the Latin. Although I suppose that's actually probably pretty useful. It just seemed like the odd choice for a second language in an only two language program. And then Get some shaping. Get some shaping done here. Nostril there ish, there ish, and then the other side. These are not final marks, they're just sketches. Oh, I I did Spanish in in rural Tennessee. Um, I I learned Spanish <laughs> with the worst accent. It was amazing. If you've ever heard anyone speak Spanish with a with a deep southern accent, it's an experience. Hello, Tiramas. We are comparing languages we learned like 20 years ago. And then and how, and how well that teaching experience was. We've also learned that uh, iskos is the way to to make something diminutive in ancient Greek, so that's fun. It's an educational stream today. Let's 
see if we can get some goes in actually like that and has lines coming up here for some reason and then divots there and there that's right, we're making a goose head, such as it is. A goose head for a giant goose body that's back here. Um, goose head is going to need to be hollow. Don't know how that's going to happen, but it implies the neck is also going to need to be hollow. Uh, these are concerns <laughs> for future Sarah. Because, um, because present Sarah is choosing to ignore them. So, you know. What will be, will be. Let's... We've kind of kind of mismatched the sides here. So I'm gonna try and and get those to meet up again. There we go. Three D is hard, you guys. <laughs> oh, Auntie Shepherd has picked up Spanish, Welsh, Latin, and ancient Greek as an adult, whereas I have learned nothing about language as an adult. Um at all. <laughs> I barely learned Spanish in high school. Oh, the goose can't get dizzy. It's protected. It's a perfectly safe goose. That I am, that I am bringing into being. Um, and trying to to successfully make goose like at all angles, which is challenging. Okay. Those divots, flat cheeks on the sides coming down like that not actually that raised up from the so there in like that in like that now I'm just talking to my goose. <laughs> uh, it takes it takes a long time to bring to bring a clay goose to life. You can't bring it to life until it's gone through the magic of the fire. Only then is it alive. When it's delicately removed from the kiln. 
all shiny. Or, or not shiny, depending on how I choose to finish it. But, but vitrified. Made, made whole and permanent by the fires. Goose call. Oh no, it just it's marching around frightening the other geese. It has a strange, slightly gravelly honk. It was built by a squire who needed a sword but failed to charm a goose. <laughs> That's right, I've gone back to our original story from, from the start of this dream. With sword with sword nests and goose charming. Goose charming squires. Who can't become knights until they've charmed a goose out of a sword. Okay. Let's let's take stock. I think we are we are larger than intended. But. But whatever. <laughs> I choose to believe that's fine. I choose to believe that. That everything will work out. I'm gonna do some some actual some actual detail stuff I hope now let's let's see. Yeah, they've got kind of a, a little Eh, uh, trying to make this even. There we go. There. So The lines where the bill meets the face are weird and confusing. Well, I'm glad your cat is enjoying this dream, Termas. Watching, watching my hands. There's a screaming child outside. I hope that it's not too distracting on the audio. Because there's nothing I can do about it. All right. Got the place that they join going on here. Getting a little bit of of that ridge in. Then according to Goose Front View we have some some sort of lines going up here. I need what do I need? This tool maybe? Time for details. Time for quiet details. <laughs> I could, but I don't have a lawn. Um, they're on the public sidewalk. So, you know. It wouldn't really be okay. <laughs> Mm 
remember. I am not country folk anymore. Now I'm city folk. I must put up with city folk things. Like just so many other human beings. <laughs> just everywhere, other people. Madness, really. I say anymore as if I've been country folk recently, and I have not. I've been, I've been in a city for a long time. Okay, that's the. Underside kind of done. Let's move on. Uh, two. Sides. It's true. Cities cities have a great deal of concrete and uh, never enough sheep. But they have public transportation. <laughs> um, client work. And, uh, and the house that I'm in. <laughs> so... So I've, I've, I've let it be a balance. It's true, although I don't need sheep, so, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable. Comfortable with just plants. <laughs> all the all the shepherds watching are like, but but the sheep. But what about the sheep? I love that I can say all the shepherds watching because it's a plural number. <laughs> it's it's brilliant. The yeah, trick is to make these sides even. Yes, good. Remember how I said I was like, eh, not quite life size. I feel like I might have made a life size goose. <laughs> I feel like I feel like my my oh, it'll be two thirds life size might have been a lie. I feel like I might have just started a life size goose. It's gonna be fun to try and fit in the kiln. And I'm gonna have I'm gonna have no explanation for why I've done such a thing. Although a studio partner. Uh, who comes the same studio night that I do, made life-size chickens. So, it's not outside the realm of possibility. Um, no, I don't, I don't, um, I don't want to care for sheep, it turns out. I, uh, as a child, I wanted a horse very badly. Like, I can't pain for a horse. As an adult, I realized that I do not want the responsibility of having to care for a horse. Um, caring for a cat is enough <laughs> for me. It's, it's quite enough responsibility. Anything larger or a herd of things is just too much. It's 
that's uh, yeah the only the only the only wrangling I can do is of cats. Yeah, no, instead you have to shovel their hay. And and the vet has to come to you or you have to put them in like a trailer. You have to have a bunch of them because they need friends. Whereas my cat does not want friends. He had a friend of me for a long time, and when she passed away, he was like, good, it's quiet now. Okay. Getting there. The grog has come to the surface on the back here, which I am unhappy about. There, that's actually better. It needed needed a little bit of of squishing and elongating here. Yep, 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 yep. Good, good, good. Okay. Eyes, eyes, eyes. Where do the eyes go? Like there. Lower. Closer. You know, that seems right-ish. Correct-ish. I know a song about grog, too. It's all for me grog. Jelly jelly grog, it's all for my beer and tobacco. a good song. It's a drinking song that you could, for example, sing while drinking cider out of a drinking horn. Just a thought. I can't imagine, can't imagine what made me think that. Oh, let's see. I just, where? The eye is like the most important thing. You see? Sorry, I had to move the light. The eye, the eye is the window to the to the goose soul. And it's like up here. And then here, trying you're trying to level up your drinking songs. What? Are you are you a bard now? <laughs> um, if someone someone is interested. I will not I will not sing you all the lyrics. You can Google them. But it's uh it's basically a song about selling your stuff for alcohol. It's uh It's a drinking song. Oh, trying to level up in general. I have a spear and a drinking horn. Fair enough. Yes. Oh, uh, now Toss a Corn Deer Witcher and the Mandalorian soundtrack are like warring in my head. Okay.
Okay, okay, okay. Let's try and make a goose eye. And if I mess it up, I can start over. Yay, tiny detail work. Am I in focus? Am I in the focus window? Yes. You must run run amok with spear and sword. Is this is this is this why you, you started to plan battle battle with the UPS truck? Is this what happened? You needed a worthy opponent. But then UPS begged for mercy. <laughs> Okay. Ah, yes, now it's FedEx. I should have ride into battle. against the fierce warriors of the FedEx. Okay. I'm not super angry with how this is going, <laughs> which is exciting. That's right. It's too big for a dot for an eye. Got to sculpt an actual, actual eye on there. And that means it needs eyelids and everything. Okay. The trick is to give it an eyelid without making it look mad. Because it needs to look like an adoring mom. Because it has a baby. I don't want it to look mad at the baby. Okay. Extra detail that's probably going to come back to bite me in the butt later. When I'm like, no, I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to squish it accidentally. Oh well. I'm sure it's fine. Sure, it will all end up fine. Hey, I guess you didn't put their phone on silent. Okay. That's... It mm, looks a little mad. How... How is it that they always look a little mad? This happens when I draw them, too. Uh No, I want it I want it to be I want it to be a loving a loving charming goose gazing down at her at her wee one tucked in her wing. 
a mother a motherly goose. Not a mad goose. Okay, we'll we'll let that we'll let that be for now. Um because we have to do the other side. We have to try and make it match. Oh boy. Cause because that's not hard. And a crown of swords. Uh, a, a bow and a crown of swords. Goodness. Goodness, goodness. At least I have a cheerful text noise. <laughs> Oh, see, now this, now we already, already angry, already mad. Look how mad. Uh, how did I, how did I make this happen? Gotta try and fix that. That's a little bit better. I guess. Well, at least they're they're sort of at least I don't look at sorry for the flipping, but at least I don't look at one or the other and think, no, that's weird and wrong. They don't match. So that's the start. So yay. I refuse to worry about the fact that this is Definitely too big a piece of clay to not hollow out. And how in the world am I going to have a hollow neck? How in the world is that going to happen, you guys? Oh, if only I could, if only I had a machine that would make me a tube. Oh no, our craft. Rewriting the song. I think it maybe it needs to be O Planet. Yeah, O Planet of Tattoo. <laughs> Toss him. But Mandalorian is far. Is it's not. It's too long for coin. So maybe maybe uh, maybe toss a snack to your sarlacc or planet of Tatooine. That might that might be a little bit. See now it's cheeky and you you uh, you have to know you have to know what you're getting into to understand. <laughs> yes, an animal, an animal balloon neck. Oh no, that, that's actually, I'm saying oh no, but actually um, that might be how I do it. <laughs> that's uh, it's actually a pretty, a pretty solid solution when it comes right down to it. Um, I need a way to support a hollow neck form and, and balloon animals might, might be the way to do it. It's, Yeah, not on. I won't. I won't. I won't make balloon balloon animal neck on stream though. I think. Um. Because that's a bit. That's a bit much. Okay. Eyes. Give it a little bit of a. There we go. Okay. Goose. Head. Eyes. Um. Some. 
texture down here. Where it's going to go into the neck. Same on this side. Texture where it's going to go into the neck. Okay, it's time to deal with this with with the bill. Okay, the line of this starts in the corner. Oh no. Uh put a make put a goose call in the head and make it no, because it won't be squeezy in the end. It's only squeezy now and we shouldn't squeeze it because because that could cause problems. So so geese have, have neat have a neat thing going on. Hang on. I'll I'll try and I'll try and put it in there. So there's this curve. And then it goes down here. And in they've got like a flat inset kind of thing going on there. Uh, where you can kind of almost see their goose teeth. Um I feel like Arcraft is thinking of, of a bellows of a bellows and a and a goose call because uh because earlier, if you were not here, I was commenting on, on the squeeziness of the of the balloon goose base. Cause there's a balloon inside there. And it's a weird squeezy shape. Um, I'm not going to sculpt individual goose teeth exactly, but I'll show you what I'm going to do once I've got this sort of in the way I want it. What I'm going to do is go in and do this. that you can just see the tiny it's true it is open in the bottom art craft I could I could still do it you are correct I could I could in fact still make it You'd have to have like a little pump thing that came out somewhere. Anyway, there is the goose teeth. Just the hint of them. Um, because they make me happy. All right. I'm going to pull this out because this has a good view of, of the of the nostril. The line that comes down here and then right here about midway. And it's like ah too much clay on my tool. So there I want to want to try and, and lift the the appropriate amount of clay <laughs> our craft has been planning to figure out how to make this goose honk as soon as he learned I was making a hollow from the beginning of this stream he's been planning he's been planning how to make this work I love it All right, so there is one side of a 
if not entirely finished, a, a sort of mostly formed, mostly formed goose. And uh, Auntie Shepard, I don't know why the collie is yelling at you. It could be anything. Um, but yeah, so I'm actually, uh, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with this actually. I'm uh, I am pretty okay with how this is looking. Um, I too love the hint of teeth. I am now because it is a sculpture and not a drawing. I must, I must do it again on the other side, which, uh, which makes me sort of sad, but, uh, but there's nothing to be done for it, but to do, okay, again, there. Mm. There. Just adding little markers for for where things go. Because and then up here. Up and then Back down. Okay. There. And up here. Oh, this is hard to do backwards. <laughs> I always do the easier side first. The side that, oh no, the side that makes more sense. Good night, Auntie Shepherd. I'm glad you came to join us for Goose. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try and do this because Because facing facing left is is the weird angle for some reason. I don't know why. Also, this side of the bill is like a little bit drier and a little bit grainier for some reason. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. But um, it is, it is about six o'clock, um, but I think that what I'd like to do is at least finish this, this face um, before I wrap up. As I said, I did choose a thing that I absolutely knew was impossible to finish on one stream, but I thought we never do anything particularly ambitious and it would be fun. Oh, that side goes up too far. And it would be fun for you guys to see sort of the weird technical part of working on a particularly big piece. Um, yeah, we're, I mean, it's, it's, we're, we're about, we're about to wrap. We just, just gonna, just gonna get sort of the last of the details of, of this side in. Make sure that it's nice and ideally symmetrical. And then 
our little goose teeth in here. The arc back. Yes, good. I've done I've done the thing. Okay. And then and then the nostril. This one really has to be at about the same place. Because otherwise it'll look real weird. All right. Smooth that down like we do on the other side. Yeah. Symmetrical goose. <laughs> yes. Good, good symmetrical goose. And just sort of quickly sketch in because there's this divide where they've got like a little, a little shield form at the end of their, of their little beaks. And I'm just gonna sketch that in before this gets any drier. There we go. And on this side, nearly there. Poor second camera has not had a lot to do since the beginning of this stream. So, so there we are. Pretty. Pretty good progress on goose head. The smile helps. She looks pretty happy. Um, I'm going to temporarily um, kind of core this bit out to remind myself that she needs to be hollow. Glad Andy Shepard isn't here to see it. Um, and there we go. Mama Goosehead, as a reminder, back here we have the body. I'll just point it at that, maybe. Well, that's just the worst camera angle. Can you sit on top of the tube? There you go. Um, so we've got the body. Here's the head. I'm gonna wrap this head really, really well in plastic. Um, so that it doesn't dry out. And uh, figure out, uh, figure out what to do about the neck. But uh but yeah, I'm feeling feeling pretty good about about what we've done. I'm gonna set goose on this sponge for now. Um and uh I think I think this is where we'll wrap up. We did start a little late, um, but we're at a point now where I would have to start a whole other thing. And uh, I think we might as well just leave it here with the uh, mostly finished goose face. Um, and I'll keep you guys up to date on Twitter how this goes. Maybe I'll post some videos. Maybe we'll come back to this for another um, Friday Tea Time stream. Um, thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed this stream and enjoy all of my streams, remember, you can join my Patreon. 
on my Patreon, you can get sketches that I don't post on anywhere else. You can get behind the scenes stuff. And uh, on different tiers, you can get prints and sketch requests. And it's pretty cool. So if you have some money to spare, that'd be awesome. And until next Friday, have a good weekend. And me and this goose, we'll see you then. Bye.